Though my reins be consumed within me, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart fail it. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Mm -hmm. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus was weeping, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We now will begin with our opening song by digging window given, hold to God unchanging hands, and we will just follow the order of the program from there on. <laughs> Time is filled with swift transitions. Oh no, on earth on who can stay? We've got to build our hopes on things eternal. We gotta hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on, help me sing it. Everybody on. Say 
says this, oh, when your journey is completed, oh, if, if to the Lord you have been true, oh, encourage the family. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Jason, we gotta hold to his hand. Family, God's unchanging hand. We gotta build, build our hopes on things eternal. We gotta hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on, one more time. Oh, everybody ought to hold to his hand. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We've got to hold to the master's hand. God's unchanging hand. We've got to feel, feel our hopes on things eternal. Oh, hold to God's share in your group to Aunt Bessie and to Jason to all the whole family in times like these we need comfort and I find comfort in Psalms 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of a death, I will feel no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. They anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May the family find comfort in the reading of God's holy and precious word. We do give honor to God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Reverend Lundy, Pastor Scatter, and to my family. To my glory. We thank Him so much for allowing us to be a part of this journey. It has truly been a love story. And we pray Him for strength for the family. And Jesus himself, he left us a word, knowing that this time would come. And in the word he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. We praise God that these words of comfort will bring a little bit of comfort to them. O oh, bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be found in my mouth. 
To God be the glory, to God be the praise. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, he who gave his life for each and for all of our sins. He who is waiting in glory to receive us back unto himself. To the Honorable Pastor, Pastor Lundy, to the clergy assembled here, and to uh, this great family, of the Jenkins, to the help me, to the son, Jason, the granddaughters, uh, to the brother and sisters, sister rather, and all man of kindred, it is in the glorious and blessed and precious name of the Lord Jesus the Christ that we are blessed to be able to stand, amen, and to represent the Amity Baptist Church and First Lady. We extend to this grieving family our sincere and utmost prayers and condolences. We certainly encourage your heart, and you know, those who know the Lord, you know that even in our moments and times and hours of sorrow and sadness that we could not make it through this even if the Lord was not ever present with us to help us and to bear us up. So be encouraged and as we go to the Lord in prayer ask him sincerely and earnestly to help you in these precious moments. God our Heavenly Father, God who is the creator and maker of all things. It is that we as a people and as a family in the glorious and blessed and precious and strong name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we do so Lord through the option and indwelling of your spirit that dwells within each and every believer. We come God lifting you. We come God honoring you. We come God praising you. We come, God, glorifying you and thanking you for your new and fresh mercies. God, even now, while we are bent over in sorrow, while our hearts carry and shoulder the heavy burden of grief and sorrow, if it had not been, Lord, for your new mercies, if it had not been for your loving compassion, if it had not been for your continued faithfulness, God, unto all of your creation as well as your creatures, we could not bear this burden of sorrow and grief alone. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you in the blessed and precious name of Jesus for strengthening and for encouraging this family as they have suffered, Lord, an awesome loss. And so, Lord, we thank you for our sister in the Lord, Sister Pat, whom you have blessed to walk the face of your earthly creation and be a member of your earthly and heavenly family. And God, as you blessed her to prosper and to journey through this course of life and to, God, achieve some of the things, perhaps, her spirit, her mind, and soul, we're focused upon, but yet not forgetting, Lord, your continued presence, your continued guidance, your continued kindness. And even in her sickness, Lord, you were there. Every tear, every pain, every discomfort, you felt it, and you knew all about it. And so, God, we thank you for past life. We thank you, Lord, for the great legacy wherein she leaves behind. Father, in the name of Jesus, we surely thank you for precious memories that yet linger and shall continue to linger in our hearts. So strengthen this family in the glorious name of Jesus. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you for being our refuge. And thank you for being, oh God, our shelter. And a very present help in times of trouble. 
So Lord, while we may weep now, while it may seem as night unto our very souls, yet do we rejoice, and yet are we made glad, because joy shall surely come in the morning. You promised us according to your word that this is not the end. That those who die, who believe in the Lord Jesus, when they take their last breath, they shall live again. So we thank you. We glorify your name in the glorious and precious name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. When peace like a river attendeth thy way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever thy lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. We stand at this moment on behalf of the family of Patricia and Perry to say thank you to each of you who are assembled today for your ministry of presence that means so much to this family. They are grateful for your prayers. Many acts of kindness have been shown to them during her sickness and since her passing on behalf of her son, her husband, her mother, her brother, her two sisters, and this entire family. They are deeply grateful for the acts of kindness that's been shown to them. To all the ministers who are assembled today, to Dr. Lunday, who is a part of this family, and to all the ministers serving today, thank you for your ministry of servitude on today. The family has received many cards of sympathy. On today, we've chosen three letters to read to represent those many received. At a later date, when the family's more composed, they will perhaps get back with a more personable manner. An expression of sympathy to Dick and Eugene Rainey, Dick and Kathleen Rainey, and the Perry family. It is with sincere sympathy and tenderness of heart that the officers and members of the Lambert's Chapel, RZUA Church, South Hill, Virginia, send you these words to express comfort to you in the death of your sister, Patricia A. Perry. Christ has prepared our way May God ease our hour of sorrow and surround you with his love. May it bring you strength to know our Father's house above is a house of many mansions where his son has set aside special places near him for those loved ones to abide. We are praying for each of you. Time and prayer will bring you relief. May God heal your hopes and may you look to the hills from which cometh your help. May God bless you and give you strength and courage. Resolve that we bow in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father. Respectfully submitted Lambert's Chapel Church family, Reverend Mark L. Finney, Pastor, Minister Melvin Rainey, Sr., Deacon Elmore Jones, Pastor Seward, and Deaconess Sarah <laughs> Lassiter, Church Clerk. First Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church of Christ from New York to the family, Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who continues to rescue us from ourselves and harbors our lives in the bosom of his care and salvation. We, the First Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church of Christ, located on the Hudson River Banks of New York, celebrate the life of Sister Patricia Ann Perry, a phenomenal member of our congregation since our beginning in 1988. Her presence among us was significant and her smile will be missed among the faithful who called her friend. Sister Perry's appearance and style will forever be remembered among us, for she carried herself with dignity. She was always well adorned, stylish. Her entrance into the sanctuary with her mother was always legendary because her entrance into worship was the equivalent of her faith and affirmation. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. We will miss Sister Perry and her ability to walk and live out her faith before us. We shall never forget her care and love of family. She lived, worked, and cared for family. Her mother, siblings, son, husband, and wonderful grandchildren are forever blessed to be a part of the legacy of Sister Patricia and Perry. So to the family, please understand that when the service of gratitude is over 
and people go home and you're left alone to grieve, just know that Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace and the Sovereign Counselor of this world is only a whisper away. He is the most reassuring reality in this world whose presence is perpetual and whose love constantly makes available peace to those who live are in need of a blessed and wonderful assurance. Our prayer is that you stay strong even through your tears. In his grip we shall remain. The First Emmanuel Missionary Baptist Church of Christ, Reverend Everett L. Newton, Pastor. And lastly, the Rocky Branch Baptist Church in Sutherland, Virginia, to the family of Miss Patricia Perry. Jason, Danita, and family, we the Rocky Branch Baptist Church were sorry to learn the passing of your beloved mother. We want you to know that our heartfelt sympathy is with you and your family, and we share in your sorrow at this difficult time. As you go through this bereavement period, we pray that God's ever-present love surround you and bring comfort to your hearts. God's words tells us the peace of God surround you. The peace which surpass all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus, Philippians 4 and 7. So look to the Lord for that peace. He will see you through. As you celebrate the home going of your mother, be thankful for the life she lived and the love she shared. She has earned her reward. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. We pray God's blessing on each of you, done by the order of the Rocky Branch Baptist Church this 11th day of January 2021. Reverend Dr. Lynn G. Robinson, Pastor, Elois F. Evans, Church Clerk. Again, to each of you sharing this intimate moment with the family and those who are watching via live stream, thank you on behalf of this family for your ministry of presence and your prayers in days to come. As the family shared with me in making arrangements, they said her favorite color was red, and you can see that many people are adorned with red and her flowers are red, and I wonder why she liked red. She wasn't a Delta, but she loved red. And I thought about the blood of Jesus. She knew that her life was covered, even through her sickness. Jason and the rest of the family, even though the blood covered her, covered her, now she's with safe resting with the master. No more pains, no more hospitals, no more medicines. She's made it to that place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and our weary souls shall be at rest. Rest on, Sister Patricia. We love you dearly. Now it's God who loves you best. Thank you, Mr. Kevins and others. Now we will have expressions from the family. This is hard, guys. First, I just want to give honor to God. Jesus, my Lord and Savior, my Holy Spirit. Family, I'd like to personally thank the ministers that are and pastors that are participating in the services today. Bobby L. Jones, Minister Melvin A. Rainey, Reverend Cornelius Ogburn, and Reverend Dr. Herman Lundy in Flat Rock, in Flat Rock Baptist Church. We'd also like to thank Joseph. M. Johnson and Son's Funeral Home, Wendell Givens and staff. My mom's husband, Dwayne Perry. My aunt, Kathleen Rainey. About a year ago, I probably had to make the hardest call I ever had to make in my life. I called my aunt, and I hate to hold her, my mom's diagnosis. Since then, she's been with me every step of the way. And I don't know how I could have made it without her. <coughs> Truly, it's been a blessing. Also, would like to thank my wife. You know, when 
I got my mom's diagnosis. I called my wife and I said, hey, I think, you know, I want her to come stay with us to go through her treatments. And she basically said, well, what do I need to do? And since then, she's been by my side. You know, sometimes as the man at the home, you feel like you're supposed to be the rock of the family. He's truly been by my side completely throughout this journey. And I just want to thank everyone, family and friends, for all your support. Flowers, prayers, calls, text messages over the last year. Even though sometimes they didn't come directly to me, but I got the word. And I truly thank all of you. It's, 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 it's awesome how you know friends and family show up when you're really going through a trying time. And I thank each and every one of you. Especially when I thank all of you, as I see all you guys gathered here today, for being with us to celebrate the life of my mom, an amazing, strong mother, Patricia Ann Perry. She was such a caring, supportive, and loving mother, wife, daughter, grandmother, and friend. My mom was love, and I'm truly thankful for God for putting her in my life. You know, she often said, As she was going through and in her last days that you know we were all going to be rich and um and i thought about that thing for a while <laughs> and i said you know what we were already rich because god gave us the gift of our love <laughs> so mom just know you're truly going to be missed but I know that you're in a better place now. And as hard as it is to accept this, I know and understand that God called you home because your work here on earth was done. <laughs> and it was time for you to go to your heavenly home and receive your heavenly reward. Mom, we will miss you and we will always love you. Next, we're going to ask Reverend Alexander Williams to come. Uh, I've had some, some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some, some weary days and uh, some lonely nights. But when I, when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days outweigh my bad days, and I, I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low, I can hardly see the road. I ask the, the question, Lord, Lord, why, why so much pain? But family, he knows what's best for me. All of my weary eyes, they sometimes can't see. So instead of complaining, can you lift your hands out and say thank you, Lord? And I, 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 I,
don't complain. Well, Pat, why you didn't complain? Because God, God's been so good to me. He's, he's been real good to me. More than this whole world or you could ever be. God's been good. Has God been good to anybody? He's been good to, to me. He, he, he drives all of my tears away. Turn my midnight into day. So instead of complaining, I've learned to say, thank you, Lord. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. No more sickness, so thank you, Lord. No more pain and suffering, so thank you, Lord. I won't come. Giving honor to God, to the clergy that are here with us today, all the first ladies and church officers, and to this great family, beginning with the husband, Wayne Perry, his son. Jason, daughter not need her, mother to the grandmother, all of the related families. I, I hope you all will pardon my talking through this mask and with my hat on. Uh, but I, if you don't know it, I will remind those who do know it that I am 78 years old. will soon be 79 on March 29th. And from what I understand, this pandemic that we're going through is not so friendly to old folks. So I'm going to do everything I can do, including wearing this mask when I'm preaching, to stay away from having to go through what others have told me you go through when you catch COVID-19. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. We come not because we've been so good, but we come because you've been so merciful unto us. Gracious Father, we thank you for the life of Patricia Ann Perry. Thank you, dear God, for her her son, her mother, her sisters, her brother, and all of her close family. And now, dear God, as we try to speak a word to your people for you, dear God, let your people hear through me from heaven today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When I read the obituary, I found information to help me out. And there's two things in that obituary that helped me out and was number one is that Pat had a favorite scripture. And that scripture was Proverbs third chapter verses five and six, which I shall read. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. When Jason talked with me about doing this eulogy, I asked him whether he wanted me to, 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 to give a regular sermon or whether he just wanted me to keep it short, and he told me, well, well, uh, it's up to me. 
And as I thought more about it, I, I thought about the, 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 the pastor that showed up at the church with a bandage on his face. And his favorite digging and diggingist met him at the door. And the diggingist asked him, said, Reverend, why do you have a bandage on your face? He sort of smiled and he said, well, I was shaving this morning and, and I got to thinking about my sermon and I cut my face. Well, then the diggum spoke up and said, Reverend, I got a suggestion. Next time when you're shaving, I want you to think about your face and cut your sermon. <laughs> so, so Jason, this is what you might find that I've done today. I'm, thinking about my face. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I, I, I believe that uh, when Jason was a young teenager, before he graduated from high school, that he and his mom may have had a little dialogue that turned out to really be a monologue by mom. And, and I believe that Solomon may have helped Pat out here by saying, my son, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. I, I, I believe that Pat laid the laws down to Jason when he was a youngster. Your dues, your don'ts. And I'm thankful to God that Jason has been an obedient son that has followed his mother's guidance. But then we fast forward into her favorite verses, which says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now we, we know that when we speak of trust, we, 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 we think about uh, 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 reliance, being able to rely on something or somebody. We, we, we know when you say trust, you mean confidence, have, have confidence in, in somebody. We, we, we know that when you say trust, you're thinking about dependability. And these are the three things that I think Pat wanted Jason to, to focus on as he growed up and and began to make his own decisions in life. But, but see, when it says, all your heart, it, it, it shows here that what Solomon was telling his, his son is, is this is not a half-hearted situation. Trusting in the Lord is not something you just do part-time. Trusting in the Lord is not something that you do on Sundays. Amen. Trusting in the Lord, you must do it with all your heart. Amen. It's an everyday affair that you're dealing with when you deal with trusting in the Lord. But then it says, lean not on your own understanding. Jason, don't just lean on your understanding. You, you, you might be a little better off now that you've gotten to be a grown man. But, but when you were a youngster, you, you would have been in trouble if you leaned on your understanding. And, and I would imagine that when Jason first started driving, that, that, that when, when mom was on the car with him, I, I, I would imagine he... He, he obeyed her and drove the way she wanted him to drive. But oh, when she was out of the car. If he wanted to put the pedal to the metal, look out. He put the pedal to the metal. But, but, but here, I believe, Jason, she is telling you, don't lean just on your understanding. Uh, she was giving you the word of God, and the word of God is is what all of us can depend on, what all of us can have confidence on, what all of us can rely on. 
for then in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge God don't acknowledge man but in all your ways acknowledge God and, and, and if you are obedient to God and will acknowledge him in, in all your ways then he will direct your path he, he will show you which way to go and, and I believe that that, that, that Jason picked up on that because I believe that when, when, when Jason started looking for a wife I, I, I believe he prayed about it and I believe God showed him uh, who he should marry and, and he has blessed they got married they got blessed they've got two children they've been blessed and, 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 and notice how she came up today to help him out when he need, uh -huh, she came right on up here and helped him out. God bless you. God bless you, sister. That's what your wife's supposed to do. That's what your wife. But her husband would have to do that too if she was in that position. But but nevertheless, God is saying in the Scripture that in all your ways, if you would just consult Him, He will direct your path. He'll direct your path in marriage. He'll direct your path on a job. He'll direct your path in worship. He'll direct your path uh, uh, in flying on the airplane. He'll direct your path on driving the car in all your ways. He'll direct your path. But then in closing, the, the second thing that was in that obituary that helped me out and Reverend Williams has helped me out because he's already sung that song, and I'm not going to try to sing it. <laughs> but but, but I, I just want to say a few, few words that Pat said because she loved that song. I won't complain. She just said she won't complain. She's had some good days. She's had some hills to climb. She's had some weary days. And even some lonely nights. But, but when she looked around, and, and when she thought things over, all of her good days outweighed her bad days. And she said she won't complain. She won't complain when she's feeling good. She won't complain when she was feeling bad. She won't complain when she was on her deathbed. Because she knew that God had been good to her. And that's a message that all of us can, can, can live with. Because God is so good. God is so good to all of us. And all of us need to always trust in the Lord. And lean not on our understanding. But in all our ways. In all our ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I, I'm so glad that, 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 that I, I came to Jesus just as I was. I was wearied and sad, but I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. And that's why congregation and family my testimony is, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Yes, I'll trust in the Lord. I'll trust in the Lord until I die. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Yes, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross also for me. So, gracious Father, we thank you for the life of Patricia and Perry, we thank you for her husband and son and mother and family. And we thank you for all these dear friends that have been here today. And I promise y'all that I would not be here long. So in, in God's name, in Jesus' name, I'm going to sign off now. We're going to prepare.
for the next thing on this agenda program, which includes the, the committal and benediction. Might we prepare ourselves for the final committal services? Mm -hmm. Dr. Lundy will lead us at this time. Man that is, woman that is born of a woman, hath but a short time to live, mm -hmm. and is full of misery. She cometh up and is cut down like a flower. She fleeth as it were a shadow, and never continueth in one state. In the midst of life, we are in death. Of whom may we seek for succor? But of thee, O Lord, who for our sins are justly displeased. Yet our Lord God most holy, O Lord most mighty, O holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us not into the bitter pains of eternal death. Thou knowest Lord, the secrets of our hearts. Shut not thy merciful ears to our prayer, but spare us, Lord, most holy, O God, most mighty, O holy and merciful Savior, thou most worthy judge eternal. Suffer us not at our last hour for any pains of death to fall from thee. For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God in his wise providence to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection in the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world. The earth and the sea shall give up their dead, and the corruptible bodies of those who sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body. According to the mighty work in their whereby, he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write from henceforth, blessed are the dead die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. May we pray. Almighty Father in heaven, we thank you for the life of Patricia Ann Perry. We thank you for her husband and her son and her mother and her sisters and brother. We thank you for her extended family. We thank you, dear God, for the funeral home officials who are serving us today. Now, dear God, we just pray that your will be done on earth as in heaven. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion Holy Spirit rest rooting about in our lives. His now evermore we pray. Let the redeemed say, Amen. All together, Jesus keeping near the cross in our clothing selection together.
This concludes the funeral services for the late Patricia Perry. And again, on behalf of her most precious family, again, thank you to each of you for sharing this special moment with them. Again, to all the ministers who serve today, God bless you for your ministry of servitude. In conclusion, the family members that are holding the red roses represents the love that you share for your loved one. As we enter, as we exit today's grave, you may choose to place it upon the open grave or keep it to choose to cherish in days to come. This does again conclude the services. May God's chosen blessings be upon each of you. In conclusion to the family, on behalf of the Joseph and Johnson and Son Funeral Home, we present to you a plaque in remembrance of your mother, in remembrance of your daughter, your wife, your sister. We hope that you would cherish it in, in days to come. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, we will not greet the family at today's, after today's services, but our continued prayers will be with them. We know that God's prayers can reach where we can't. So we are continuing to pray for this family, that God will continue to grant us serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things that we can, and God give us the wisdom to know the difference. These services are now concluded. You will now retire to your vehicles. God's blessings upon each of you. Thank you.